psychoanalysis is in a way defined by um, the fact that it is itself a very broad eclectic umbrella mm-hmm. and emphasizes uh, that our our key um, key need as human beings is to connect with other human beings, and so and so it draw it it's it's all about the it is all about the relationship between people, right? There is a kind of notion prior to this that you know here I am as the analyst, here you are as the patient, you know I'm in a position of pure authority over you. I know what's happening, you don't know what's happening. Uh, I'm a specialist. I'm investigating you like an object. And um, and we're trying to dig into you and see what's going on. Um, relational psychoanalysis is one of the trends, not the only one, one of the trends, which is recognized, this is not the way it works at all, yeah. um, that that both parties are bringing baggage, that, um, that there's something that goes on that can't necessarily be articulated by either one, that people are are not just a block, but are, are, are uh, their responses are contextual, and that what you bring out in me, um, someone else may not bring out in me, um, and that um, and that uh, an analyst need not be the sort of isolated, distant, rigid authority figure, but um, there is a big healing element of 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 um, of relating. You know, uh, uh, the analyst sometimes perhaps disclosing things about themselves, right. of uh, of them being human. The authentic human relationship is being extremely important in the. Uh, curative process, basically, if we even want to use that word, which is itself yes. dangerous. But right. relational psychoanalysis, very, very brilliant trend. A lot of wonderful thinkers, people who brought in. I mean, I, again, I'm not, I'm not a psychoanalyst myself, and I'm not a scholar of psychoanalysis. I've read about it because out of my own interest, but it's so huge and so deep. Um, but um, you know, people who brought in ideas of, like, you know feminism into psychoanalysis, you know, ideas of, of, of racism, of societal influences, all kinds of stuff going on there, you know, to understand that people are not just uh, atomized individuals, but that they're also social creatures, right. contextual creatures, cultural creatures, um, all kinds of things going on like that, that are relevant to an understanding of the unconscious, you know, so relational psychoanalysis, what's called Along with that, you know, another very important school of thought is, you know, what's called self-psychology. The self-psychology is, you know, again, prior to the so-called Freudian conception, which itself has been misinterpreted, you know, you have, um, you have this, 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 um, this trend in starting in the 1970s, I think, or maybe a little bit earlier, where, <laughs> I mean, it seems so obvious now, but the idea that um, it's not just, yeah, I should say the older conception was people are a bundle of biological drives right biological drives okay like a like a like a like a machine right mm-hmm. and um you know in the somewhat newer conception self psychologists bring um there is a very very important thing called the self <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not the self in a spiritual sense exactly right but right. it's the self in the sort of there's an overall conception of oneself and right. its health is critical to psychological functioning and many of the modern ailments that afflict people a sense of emptiness different narcissistic kinds of issues have to do with problems with 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 the self problems with a lack of a healthy self uh esteem a lack of a healthy sense of self um uh and and those are often um things that have been um uh established because of certain deficits in childhood and certain ways of relating to the person again see the older so the conception was and other things also come on. Yeah, codependence, all kinds of things, all kinds of things like that. You know, in the past, again, you know, the earlier version of psychoanalysis and the earlier part of the 20th century would have been more like um the key thing in psychoanalysis is just insight, right? I'm gonna tell you what's going on one way or the other, and that's gonna change you. Right. Insight is still important, but the trend from self-psychologists and relational psychologists is equally important, maybe even more important, is the relationship itself. The mm-hmm. way that I relate to you is itself going to help you grow, you right. know? And and so self-psychologists have recognized that um, the critical importance of empathy, the critical importance of, um, of providing a kind of nurturing space mm-hmm. whereby somebody might slowly feel themselves over a yeah. period of time to be more more worthwhile than they previously felt you know so so that's a very very critical trend um there are you know there i don't know much about this but i do respect them and they're very interesting um you know the there's a the uh, school of jacques lacan um mm-hmm. jacques lacan was a very important french thinker philosopher and psychoanalyst um so he um 
he was one of the people who uh, wanted to kind of quote unquote return to Freud, but he did it in his own very, very special way. Um, his emphasis is uh, language, language, mm -hmm. the power of language and mm -hmm. the investigation of words, like words as being kind of formative of the mind in some very fundamental way, which is a bit of spiritual actually. Right. And um, so he goes deep into that. Uh, there's, you know, even earlier, you know, kind of a bit earlier than self-psychologists and relational psychologists were the object relations people. Um, mm -hmm. These people, again, were moving away. The prior drives that Freud conceptualized were more about pleasure and pain. But the object relations people said, you know, again, it's there's a, there are, if you want to call it drives, there are, you know, big drives for for connections, for connect mm -hmm. relations with other people. Yeah. And so you have brilliant thinkers like Melanie Klein and Donald Winnicott. Winnicott was a pediatrician, um, really investigated how children worked and, you know, the importance of very, very early experiences, you know, you know, um, very early experiences prior to um, what Freud thought was important, you know, like even when you're six months old, a year old, when there are certain um, certain kinds of, um, um, how do I put it? Certain kinds of, uh, uh, relationship between that child of that age and, uh, the mother that, 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 that are, that, uh, that deviate sufficiently far from what's healthy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mother needs to recognize a child in a certain kind of way, not perfectly, but well enough. And 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 that when those recognitions don't hold, that can cause pathology later. So he recognized these kinds of things, um, you know. And uh, so it's a very brilliant way of looking at things, um, you know. So these are some of the few. And there's there's tons of other uh, other people I could other schools that I can mention, but I think these are some of the the most important um, contemporary ones. Mm -hmm.